Hello very people, this is Christian and I will be playing around with Fusion for 60 again and this little channel up challenge I posted like two weeks ago I've been busy, it's been summer, sorry about that I should have posted my workflow a little bit earlier This is the way I'm gonna do it and let's start talking about the shape we have here uh, Somebody wanted me to explain a bit more a lot put, put more information here that this is not one body This is four bodies. We're gonna have a look at that in a zoom in picture of this one and Yeah, I could put in information, but then it's no more longer no longer a challenge It's just take a drawing and reproduce the drawing or the, yeah, the drawing and reproduce the 3d model I like to put in some hidden things in my challenges to have some fun if you have a look at this, you can see it is not really one body because if you follow one coil here, you can see it goes under other ones. If it be one single coil, coil it just spin around itself, it should not be overlapping. So let's go to our other image. Have a look. Uh, the background for this challenge was that there was a question in a Facebook group with a picture of this shape and somebody asked on how to reproduce it or examples of workflow to reproduce this shape. And there were a lot of posts on ways to do it, but a lot of them were wrong. Not that the workflow was wrong, the use of a pipe, which I will also use for correctly, but they didn't look at the geometry. A lot of examples was for one coil or other versions. There's also a version of this where it is basically like a Mobius strip that connects to itself. This one is not that. I can give you that warning. We're going to have a look. So I'm turn out red paint here just to start off looking at the shape always start looking at the shape before you start modeling so we're gonna have a look we're gonna look at one coil i already know it's four but we're going to show you how we can see that so we take one like this one here follow it along it comes here and it comes up here again and you can see it uh, loops around three more so there's one two three four so my guess is that it's four bodies but we can do a check of that we have three so if I go here, I jump over three, that should be the same coil. One, two, three, that should be the same coil. One, two, three, that should be the same coil. One, two, three, there, one, two, three. Sorry for the boring part of this video. One, two, three, here, one, two, three, here, one, two, three, here, and one, two, three. And we are back to the same place. That means, uh, that is one single body, which means that these here must be separate bodies. They cannot, they could be connected to other bodies, but basically you can see it's a repetitive pattern, the symmetry. So it means that we should most probably have four bodies, one, two, three, four. And the number of twists, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there should be... 10 twists sorry that's a bad zero that's a zero okay i hope we can read that uh so we have four bodies we had 10 twists so okay we can go into fusion now uh i've already remember step one in fusion make a save for god's sake make a save i don't know how many questions we have been lately on forums oh, oh i've been working for three hours and all my work is gone did you save no i did not if you do a save you start for auto save or the we call it you can get back things if fusion should crash there should be auto save you can set in references the time i have mine to five minutes right now if i work on something big i sometimes make it a bit longer because it get, can be really confusing when fusion starts to save in the background and everybody everything in fusion starts to go really slow so let's start the model so we're going to start uh Rule number one, let's make a component. Uh, I'm going to call this rings or coil, so call it whatever you want. Open up, uh, we have a region and everything, so we're going to have a look at the drawing again. We know some of the basic geometry now, so now we're going to have a look at this. We have the dimensions. We do not have that many dimensions. We have one inside eight radius that's touching at the inside of the body, one to the outside and this to me looks like a torus so we need to do something to that and we have diameter of this pipe or coil running around so let's start with these two we're going to start a sketch we're going to start it from the top i'm going to put it c on the keyboard to get circles i'm going to do construction circles i'm simply going to do two circles like that go back and check our we can remove that one 
have that one only, uh, 56.75, D for dimension, here, right click, select radius, uh, 56.75, and the other one was 333.25, dimension, uh, this, right click, select radius, 33.325, so, why do I do it this way? The good thing here, I'm using the dimensions from the drawing. So if you for some reason go back, you need to sh uh, you get a new drawing. I'm not making up new dimensions. I'm using the dimensions given here. Uh, the last one is the 3.5 here. We're going to do a C for circle once again. And do that 3.5 immediately. Pull out. Oops, sorry. I want to pull out the dimension outside a bit. And I know this coil, uh, the outside, that's the outside body should be tangent, so let's use tangent. And the other thing is now spinning around here, so I want to make this horizontal into his. You can put a line or something, but you can also do it immediately from point to point, horizontal, vertical, the region point or the center point, and our little circle. And it gets locked in, just open up a sketch it. we have a fully defined sketch. So. This is where we run a coil, and we have all the geometry giving in the drawing. The thing we now need is, of course, we need the center line. So we're going to do a circle, make it not construction. We're going to use it as a path. So we need this uh, somewhere in the middle here. I'm going to put, not put it too close to the middle right now. How do I get this to be in between these two circles? There are some different ways. I'm going to use the line workflow. Line, construction lines. I'm going to make a line here. Make it straight out, make sure it gets horizontal. And then a coincident between line and center point. So what happens now, this line is now locked down here. And the thing I want to use of these lines is of course the midpoint. So we make a coincident between the circle. It has already selected a line, I didn't want that. Coincident, nothing is selected. Select the circle. And now I want the midpoint here and it doesn't show up. What you do, you hold down the shift key on the keyboard and suddenly this little triangle thing pops up. That's the midpoint of this line. So if I click here, that means that this line is now exactly in the middle between these two circles, which means I do not have to calculate the diameter of this. If I need me to change the dimension somewhere, this Circle just for long. You can use parameter to do the math, yes, but you can also use geometry. The second thing we want to do, uh, I'm going to use surface sweep to create the path for this pipe here. And so I need some type of uh, line or something here. So we're going to do a line. We're going to do it from this point here. And sorry, not construction line, normal line into here. And we get a nice black line. Everything is fully defined. So with that, I have basically done all the geometry. So if I change the diameter here, the length of its line is gonna change, it follows along. If I change anything else, everything follows along. Finish sketch. Uh, surface tools, so we're gonna to do a, a sweep off, uh, just turn on things. This is the line here, along this path here. Oh, it's nice and flat. And if we go back to yeah, our drawing, we did a calculation earlier. It needs 10 twists. So let's do that twist angle. 360 degrees is one turn times 10. And it should not produce an error because we are now doing a correct surface. We are maintaining the two sides of this. So that looks good. Let's open up the bodies. We can have a look at it. So it's here. Uh, now we're going to do solid. Uh, here comes the arrow sometimes. This is not totally repeatable every time, but with the dimension given here, you can get an arrow. Because I do not want to use this uh, circle here and sweep because that is not uh, uh, perpendicular to the path. If I do that, that's not really a circular. If I call it uh, intersection, it's not circular, it's like a small ellipse or oval. So uh, what I want to do, I want to create, I can use a pipe, oh, sorry, create pipe and select this one here. And we're going to see, uh, it gets a bit confusing here, uh, this is going to be 3.5. Uh, let's do a small thing here, I'm going to go back to this sketch, I'm going to edit this dimension and do that as a parameter. Uh, oops coil diameter is equal to I need to equal a sign 3.5 like that 
if I now go back and do the pipe command again, sorry, I'm jumping back and forth. I do the pipe command here. I can now use that here. Coil diameter. And it picks up that, so I don't need to do uh, things twice. Uh, let's see it. Okay, let's see if we get an error. We get an error. Uh, this happens sometimes. The sweep cannot create a value, body, blah, 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 blah. Uh, sometimes, I don't know what is happening. Uh, it, this used to work. I might post a, a bug report about this. What I like to do is a work. We're going to delete the pipe command. We create a new sketch on basically any plane we want. It's not important. We're going to pick up this one. Going to create, go down, project include, include 3D geometry. And we're going to select these paths out here. Where are you? Where are you? Do you pick up everything? Yes, leave the whole one. I need to do it twice. Something just picks half of it when you need to help it. So we're going to finish sketch. We're going to hide our first sketch for now. And what you can do now, we do not need this surface body more. So we can right click it and select remove to be to clean up. So now we have a nice helical path here. The problem with this is that it is no longer fully parametric. If you go in and change how you do the sweep for the body, it's going to crash this one because you have to re uh, project in the 3D geometry. But anyway, we're going to do it create pipe. Once again, select the path, wait for it. Uh, we're going to type in coil diameter here, use that so we get the same. If we go back now and change the first parameter, it should update this. Uh, hit OK, and uh, look at that, that's so pretty. Uh, now, that's one, we need four more. So what we're going to do, we're going to do, hit S on the keyboard to find circular pattern. I'm lazy and I want to move around the menus. Circular pattern of bodies, this body around which axis, the center axis here. Uh, we're going to need four bodies, but uh, how, how do I get the dimensions correctly? going to use angles. One full revolution is 360 degrees. We divide it by, we have four bodies, we divide it by 10. That is the angle between two body sets and uh, basically the, the angle of the gap between uh, two bodies. We have four bodies, that means we have three gaps, so we multiply this by three and hit OK. Of course, you could make all of that parametric if you want to. So, by doing that, we have now come this far. Uh, we're gonna now uh, add S, uh, physical material. Physical material, let's see here. We're gonna do a metal, and it's S. It's really far down, sorry about that. I should so select something easier. Come on, come on, move down. Move down, a lot of aluminium. Uh, silver, silver, so there you are, silver, I'm going to move it up here, select all the bodies, and simply drag in, swoop, like that, we should get all silver, yes, we are rendered correctly, we do close, so now we have a silver material, we can select all the bodies and have a check, do we get a decent, uh, weight, uh, and we say, oh, mass, so I want to wait, Ma wait something else, mass, I get 278.8, uh, yeah, the decimal is something that important. It depends slightly on how you produce the coil. Uh, you can get something, uh, we got the numbers down to 278.0 up to, two, uh, yeah, 278.8, somewhere around there. It's not, I'm not like, oh, you need to get the exact correct uh, mass. It's just something to compare your workflows and see. So like, this is like slightly arty thing. So it's not like you need to do it 100% correct, but you have something to aim for and see if you are in the ballpark of things. So that is how I would do this. I hope this is helpful to you and you see some an error, how you can fix that and you see some things. And remember, when you're done now, don't forget to save. Yes, save. So now we are save the file. So with that, take care, see you around and goodbye.